Hey guys, welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers, and this is... Ivy. So, guys, it's a big day today. Well, I, I guess when you guys listen to this, it won't be, but today's my birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Yay! Uh, it's, you know, I mentioned it last week. It's the last year of my uh, 20s. And, uh, I mean, it's okay. I feel okay about it. I'm not sad. Um, but uh, I did have my party, in case you guys were, were wondering if you wanted an update on whether or not the guy um, showed up. And uh, and he did not. So, <laughs> crisis averted. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah, the only thing that really, the only big news from this week was um, we got a new um, Loch Ness picture. A new picture of the Loch Ness Monster. And uh, this guy was on, um, like, he was a tourist, and he, you know, went to visit the lock, like people do, and, um, you know, he took a picture of supposedly, you know, what was the Loch Ness Monster. He didn't say, he didn't say it was a uh, Loch Ness Monster. He said that it was just a really big fish. He said it was about eight feet in length from what he could see. Um, and I was very excited about this, but um, I, I'm pretty sure it's fake. <laughs> I was showing Ivy the picture. There's a um, picture in comparison of like a giant catfish and it looks pretty fake. So um, unfortunately, I think, you know, that mystery is going to remain unsolved for now. Um, but, you know, that's OK. Um, I, I thought it would be kind of fun to um, and we kind of talked touched on it last week. But, you know, we kind of thought we'd stick with the idea of talking about Bigfoot this week. Ooh. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um you know, there's a lot. I mean, Bigfoot, I'll tell you, honestly, um, I really have kind of fallen off my Bigfoot train because I, Bigfoot is a little overrated. And in my opinion, we have already proven that it exists. Um, so I haven't really done any research on it, but I was kind of looking some stuff up earlier and it just kind of hit me how like far removed from, you know, the Bigfoot community that, that I have, that I've been. So I don't know, maybe I'll do a little bit more uh, research and, and see some things. So um some new info some some updated information yeah. bitch, before it was like you would be like you could call me to talk about big <laughs> about big but i mean he was never my favorite um you know there's always been plenty that i've liked um but you know it's 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 always probably one of the most easily proven cryptid that there is so i mean um, you know, so we'll start, you know, what is Bigfoot? Bigfoot has been seen all over the entire world. Um, you know, Bigfoot has so many names. Uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Abominable Snowman, um, the Yowie, the, you know, the Skunk Ape, the Swamp Man. In Ohio, he's the Ohio Grass Man. Um, he's got so many names. But it's basically just like a giant primate um, that walks around the woods. So, you know, that's that's the gist. Um, you know, I guess I'll start. Ivy, do you believe in, in Bigfoot? I mean, it makes sense. But it's kind of crazy how we haven't actually found one. Yeah, like, the body. To be able to, like, interact yeah. with. But that's true. That's they true. probably know our nature. Right, <laughs> exactly. They're like, um, stay away. <laughs> well, you know, it is interesting. It's probably got the most reported sightings of any cryptid. Um, probably has the most like video footage and pictures and things like that and it's like it doesn't matter you know going back to like going back to just like the Patterson Gimlin footage uh, that was you know 67 and you know we have yet to be able to recreate something like that footage um, and I mean even it's, with all our advances even with the yeah even now like we just can't do it and there's so much detail in that one video and people, you know, still, procla you know, they proclaim, oh, that's a man in a suit. Like, how could you, like, did you not, that was really what, re that's what got me into cryptozoology. And I remember was seeing, I was on AOL, you know, you, you'd hope, you get on, you'd log on on your dial up internet, right? And you'd, you'd deal with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Eventually, you'd get on 20 minutes later and you'd be on the AOL landing page. And there would be, like, some headlines and stuff. None of which I ever paid attention to before. Like, I never... I would just get... Immediately start loading up the next page and wait 20 minutes. But... <laughs> um, but, yeah. The, the first time I had seen Bigfoot, it was a picture of that famous, you know, looking over the shoulder, Patty. And, um, you know, they were talking... It was something about Bigfoot. And I was like, what? 
And so I loaded the video up, you know, again, took forever, loaded the video up and watched the Patterson footage for the first time. And it blew my fucking mind. Like, I didn't understand. Like, how could people think that this is fake? And I was probably like, I was probably like 10, 11, somewhere around that age. And that was like, that's what really started it for me. And then I went to, um, in middle school, we would do, we, I did like a typing class or whatever, like keyboarding. And um, when we were done with like our work doing keyboarding, then we could like browse the internet. Mm. Well, there was like a specific website we were allowed to go to and like browse. And on that website, they had, they only had the two cryptids, but they had Bigfoot and then they had the Loch Ness Monster. And so, you know, I had already seen the Bigfoot, the Patterson Gimlin footage, I already saw that. But I saw the Loch Ness Monster, the um, surgeon's photograph, the famous, you know, Nessie photo. And like, I was sold. I was it. It was over. <laughs> and like, from that point on, I'm at the library. I'm getting all the books. I'm reading all the stuff. So, I mean, it, it just, I don't know. It, it, I knew, you know, at that, that age, I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up <laughs> a monster hunter. <laughs> so, I mean, Bigfoot does hold a special place. Um, and then I also remember being in middle school and the, uh, the, um, we used to read those, um, like the Life magazines or whatever they were at the time, you know, time. Or no, I think it was Life magazine. Yeah. And um, Ray Wallace's son did an article in it talking about how the Patterson Gimlin, Gimlin footage was fake, and his father on his deathbed admitted that it was fake. He had fake, um, like, wooden Bigfoot, you know, feet casts and, um, and whatever. And so, uh, you know, that, I, I don't know, it, it hurt my feelings. <laughs> I never believed it. And then, you know, once I grew up later and did more research into it, you know, I found out that it's, it's very possible that Ray Wallace did not make that deathbed confession. I mean, nobody can prove that he did. Nobody recorded it. You know, it's just his son could have been trying to capitalize more off the Bigfoot thing after he died. And so, um, you know, that was always, it was always kind of a mystery for me. But, um, you know, through the years, of course, I've, I've followed up with it. Just being an, an animal enthusiast anyway, I mean, you know, the fact that we could have this type of, like, missing link out there, um, it really excites me. It really gets me going. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, you know, but, you know, in my opinion, I think that Bigfoot's already been proven real. And I think it, I think it was, you know, I think it was proven as a species um, with the Erickson project that happened around, I think it was in 2010. might have been 2009 when they started. Um, but... Um, the Erickson Project was like a privately funded um, thing that they did where they were taking hundreds of supposed Bigfoot hair samples and they were kind of reverse engineering the DNA. So they would go through, it was a genome project, so they would go through and they would pick out every aspect of the DNA and basically build the Sasquatch, <laughs> you know, from the DNA and what we, you know, what we had available. And they said, okay, well, this is not something that we, you know, they were able to actually pull physical characteristics, traits of these things, all kinds of shit. And, um, you know, they were like, well, you know, this isn't something that we currently know of. It's an undiscovered species. And, um, you know, this is, uh, this is something different. Here's, this is the proof. Um, and then somewhere in the, in the shuffle, the head scientist of it, Melba Ketchum, um, they were contacted by somebody who knew where um, these, you know, the Bigfoot, the, the big feet, I guess, resided. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were able to get in contact with these creatures. Now, when they went through the DNA, and then they also had that coupled with having actual field research involved on these things, um, they kind of learned that the um, Sasquatch was an indigenous people. And they don't want us to bother them. And so they are intelligent. And, um, you know, Melba has since, um, she has moved. She's, she's bought property closer to the people. Um, you know, at first they would um, try to get the research put in a peer-reviewed journals and they wouldn't take it. They wouldn't take it. And it's not like they were looking at the science and going, no, your science is flawed. They just simply would not even, uh, like, accept. It. Right. They're like, this is not, this is ridiculous. Finally, it was peer-reviewed. And when it was peer-reviewed, um, Bigfoot was given an actual um, name uh, in our animal kingdom. Everybody's, like, we're homo sapiens, right? So everybody's got a, a scientific name. So Bigfoot was given a scientific name. 
I don't remember what it was. I'm sorry, but you can look it up. Um, you know, Bigfoot scientific name. <laughs> so, I mean, Bigfoot is, a, I mean, we have it named and still to this day, there's people that say that it's not real and it's just bizarre. Um, since then, Melba has just taken it upon herself to protect these people. Her biggest worry is that, you know, there's going to be a hunter out there. They're going to see one and they're going to shoot it. And it's, you know, in her, mi- in her mind, it's the same thing as murder. Um, they deserve rights. You know, she, she thinks that they deserve to be protected. Maybe they do if they're people, you know, why not? Um, but if they're an intelligent people, that would make sense as to why we haven't found them. Because they are intelligent enough to not let us find them. Like, uh, people are like, well, wouldn't we find a body somewhere? They live underground. Well, they could. They could live in the caves. Right. I mean, they definitely could. There's plenty of places that they could hide away from us. And then if the population is that small, then, I mean, it it would still be very easy to, <laughs> to hide from us. Village. Just be even easier, right. And uh, But, you know, there's a theory that Bigfoot possibly um, bury their dead is one thing that they say. You know, that's a very popular theory. And that's why we don't find bones. That's why we don't find bodies. Because they, they have a ceremony, you know, like we do, and bury their dead. And that would make sense. If it's a people. Other things that I've heard, other weird things I've heard is like Bigfoot. Well, I guess, you know, it's really not all that strange considering the type of shit that I'm working on. But I've heard that Bigfoot is like an interdimensional being and jumps in and out of our dimension. And like the only time I ever really heard anything about this was like a lone article on the internet somewhere. But it seems to have gained like momentum. Because even though, like, the one person that reported on, on this was probably crazy, they might actually have a point. Right. It makes sense. <laughs> and that would make sense why we can't find them is because they can move in and out of the dimensions. But I don't know. I mean, it's a really, you know, us having some type of, um, you know, intelligent, um, you know, primate out there is not that far from you know the realm of possibility um i don't know if you guys remember but one of my favorite uh well my favorite animals out there is uh coco coco the, the gorilla um the one that she knew a bunch of sign language um a, a lot of things happen with that so like they got coco or whatever and they started you know kind of building her a language and it's not just like muscle memory well, I, you weren't telling me about this. Okay, let me talk about this for a second. Let me sidetrack for a minute. Um, somebody showed me a video of um, a of a dog who can talk. So, like, the owner has built, like, a big board that sits on the floor and it's buttons that the dog can push for whatever the dog wants. And it's, it's fucking wild. I'll just show you when we're done with this. It, it's fucking wild. It's it's amazing. Um, so, like, the dog will be like, oh, I want to go outside and play. And so it'll hit the outside button. And it'll go, like, outside? Outside? <laughs> or, like, it'll be, like, close to dinner. <laughs> and the dog's like, eat. Hungry, eat. <laughs> it's amazing. But you can teach these animals memorization, so it's not that far beyond. With Coco, she didn't just learn how to memorize. Like, she, it, she was very much more in depth you could definitely tell her personality from she what she was a saying high emotional iq she did well it was probably around they said it was probably around um like she had the iq of like a three-year-old but still three-year-olds they, they have personalities <laughs> like you know for instance she um they were trying to teach another gorilla sign language and she had like saw them doing that and she had told the other gorilla good sign like like good job and <laughs> so she recognized that she would lie to get her way like mm. just so she would be devious and um like of course the other big thing is like her kitten coco's kitten um she ended up she asked for a kitten for christmas one year it gives me chills talking about it because it's just amazing um she asked for a kitten one year for christmas and they at the zoo they gave her a stuffed kitten and she was not happy about it like she would not she refused to play with it and she would tell them all the time she said sad 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 (laughs) and (laughs) so for her birthday they finally got her a kitten and um she was able to pick it out herself she got a manx a gray a gray manx and she named it all ball and all ball ended up getting out one day and got hit by a car and died and she I mean, she was very expressive about it. 
you know, she was sad, frown, bad, trouble. She would just all the all the emotions. She was very sad, and even some of the zoo um, keepers um, claimed that they heard Coco making like human crying noises, and so they went and got her two more kittens. <laughs> And she named one lipstick, and she named the other one. I don't remember what she named the other one. I just remember the one was lipstick because because he was an orange. It was an orange cat, and it had like a you know like a mouth, like a mm-hmm. lipstick mouth. She named it lipstick. <laughs> like so, she was extremely intelligent. I mean, she could you know express well, and then like she'd make her own. Like she was talking about a ring one day, but she didn't know what the sign for ring was. So she ended up signing finger and bracelet, so like a finger bracelet. So like she was able to like use her her you know um, what she knew right right she was able to use what she knew in order to create her own sign so it was you know absolutely amazing very smart so i mean that's very advanced some people think that that's unethical but why i mean because are you afraid of what they might tell you is that (laughs) i mean you don't want to get called out i don't know you know it's weird um but, you know, that does prove that we can have intelligent primates. So it's like if we had, well, like we've seen and like, you know, I'm sure, I, I think you've seen the new, the newer Planet of the Apes movies, right? You've never no. seen them? Oh my no. God, they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. But it basically shows like. I've seen the, the previous Evolving. And uh, Caesar was very much like, a, I mean, he was given like a serum or something. He was given something that makes him smarter. But yeah, so Caesar learned in a very similar way that Coco did. He was just, he was given, you know, it was, it's a movie, so <laughs> it's its a little different. <laughs> but, um, you know, it showed like a quick evolution of like what current primates could become. And that's not really outside of the realm of possibility. Caesar ended up being, in that series, he ended up being the only ape that could talk. Um, but the rest of them he taught, he had taught sign language to and stuff like that. And so, and we can do that because we have Coco <laughs> who very much did and was able to tell us everything and that's kind of eerie you know because then that does show you that animals do have their own thought process they're not just you know eat sleep and shit right but why is it easier to teach them sign language than it is to teach them to like make noises like use like form words well that, that's because they don't have the same vocal structures that we do so it's just not possible for them to to make the same sounds yeah, I guess that we that's do. That's true. I that didn't think about that. They have a limited but I'm used vocal to like range. Birds that are like they can what, say shit. Bitch, but. yeah, birds are in a whole other thing. Birds. Oh my gosh, there's like videos and stuff on the internet where you can watch these fucking birds have full ass conversations with each other, <laughs> and they do, <laughs> and they will tell you. <laughs> there's one. It's one of the um, I I, I haven't watched these videos in so long, but. They're so precious. I tear up. <laughs> but he's a he's a ring neck. Whatever those the are. The babies. Yeah. My babies. He's so, I love my babies. He's so yeah. sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's so sweet. He gives kisses to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The, yeah, he's got that one video of him of his birthday party. I think it went viral. And he's having his birthday party. And like all the birds are there and he's just having a great time. <laughs> Do you ever meet Snow? I don't think so. Oh, no. he was crazy. But anytime like a, a girl walked outside, like on the sidewalk yeah. outside his window, he would whistle. Every time. <laughs> I can't really whistle, but yeah, he would do that to to Aww. women as they walk by. <laughs> Didn't do, they, ever do it to men, yeah. but it's funny because now in the sanctuary, he's actually got a boyfriend. Really? Yeah, he's so bonded. Like he's, he's gay, but he well, whistles at women. women sometimes. Well, so. I mean, he could be bi. Just <laughs> right. Just you know, right now, he's no in a judgment. relationship, so. It's <laughs> That's so funny. No, birds are absolutely hilarious. And then, like, um, uh, a couple of my friends have this one. They had a ring neck. And his name was Boo. And he was in love with me. Like, this bird was in love with me. Like, every time I'd go over there, he'd, he'd start trying to, you know, do his uh, his mating stuff. He wouldn't, I mean, he wasn't trying to actively sleep with me, but he was... The, the tail. Yeah, yeah, roughing up his feathers and everything. Oh, he was real excited. And uh, so that was kind of funny. And then we had a betta fish, too, which betta fish, I, I bred betta fish for a couple years. And um, 
they're really interesting because like they blow bubble nests and uh, like the males blow the bubble nest and then the females lay the eggs in the nest and um you know that's where the babies stay at until they're until they hatch and um but usually they can also like they'll blow the bubble nest as like a sign of like happiness or whatever and so it's like every time i would like interact with the with the fit in there he'd start blowing his bubble nest and so <laughs> it was really sweet. So sweet it was really sweet we had that fish for so long he's tattooed on my body <laughs> that's what my yeah. that's what my beta fish tattoos are <laughs> he was one of them <laughs> but yeah so um you know they, they definitely have you know animals have their own well we know we've been sitting here all night um we were we, we played some mario kart earlier because we're nerds and um my my cat Boo has been kind of in a mood today. He's yeah, just he's been awfully expressive, and he's normally not. <laughs> he's usually pretty quiet, but today he's been talking away and just looking disheveled. Sometimes I think he just wants. I think he's having a a, a clingy day. I think he just wants to be clingy to me, and I've been busy. <laughs> I feel like he's that's bored. it. I probably I got him a present. I mean, <laughs> got him a toy. I'm not gonna give it to him. Well, you went and did stuff before yeah. we went out to dinner. So. Yeah, I've been home today, so I guess he was cuddling for a little while earlier. He was really into it too, so I think he's. And I just haven't. I've been doing my birthday stuff. I just haven't really been home. So I mean, you know, animals definitely have their own type of personality. So to think that their brains couldn't evolve into where we're at is just—it's insane to think about. That we're the only. So, do you think Bigfoot has its own language? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you I don't think know it's what it is. Vocal or physical? It's probably a mixture of both. Because like one thing that, that people have like you know, one thing that people know about is like Bigfoot um like makes they've heard like the noises or whatever, something like that. They howl. Yeah, they howl. Kind of. And so I mean obviously they do have some type of vocal cues. I think that they also express themselves. And what I mean by that is, like, there have been people, like, a bunch of, like, bush people and stuff. Um, you know, these people, some some of these bush people claim that they have uh, some type of symbiotic relationship with these creatures. And um, they'll go outside of their homes and they'll find presents and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. <laughs> like, and it's just, I'm like, present, it's just, like, bundles of sticks and shit put together. Or, like, they'll they'll move branches and, like... Like, so they'll go out to the woods one day, they'll come out the next day, and they, they've taken, like, a couple of small trees and kind of made them into something. You know, whatever it is, it's not usually anything. But it's some type of expression. And so I do think that they, you know, who knows? Maybe they're just, like, mile markers for each other. You know, who knows what it is? But I think that it's a mixture of everything. Um, I don't know. They probably would have some type of sign language if they are, um, you know, that, that intelligent. Um then yeah, I would think so. I would think they would make up their own type of hand signals. But I mean, really, if we didn't know, like if we weren't taught how to speak, like if language wasn't a thing, like we would still make noises we because would, yeah. we're able to make noises. To everything go, makes yeah, noises. That's true. Well, I guess not everything, but pretty much every animal makes yeah. noises of some sort, even yeah. if it's not actually through, like from them. Yeah, it could be through their environment. Well, I think the only way we would really know that is if either, like, one, we accidentally walked into a Bigfoot conversation. <laughs> and, or, you know, we interacted with one and it talked to us. Or, you know, we figured it out. So, like, even... It's like you see a Bigfoot in the woods and it's just like, sigh. <laughs> like, how do you know that? <laughs> You're in the woods one day, all of a sudden, you just, damn, boy! <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> it's the Bigfoot people. <laughs> it's they speak in TikTok. They speak in TikTok. Yes, they speak in TikTok. That's all they know. They just know the internet slang. <laughs> they see your dumbass fall in the woods somewhere. They're like, lol. <laughs> that, would, that would be their language. I don't know. Um, you know, I think that's a good possibility, though. Um, you know, but there's different things. Like, one of the things that people noticed in the um, patterson Gimlin footage is... Uh, oh well, for one, it has titties, so and that's different. Like that's that's weird. Like when you see, obviously faked footage, like people, or even footage that like could be somebody in a suit, because that's I mean it looks close enough. Like you don't see titties on it, right? And so with this, it's definitely has titties. <laughs> so it's a girl. So do apes have titties? 
Well, I've never really like looked into it. Like, I mean, I've seen an ape. If I seen it, I'd be like, oh, that's an ape. But I've never like seen like full mammaries. Like, I mean, obviously they 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 do because that's they how they breastfeed. Because they breastfeed. But I mean, I think they have the titties in the same way that like other animals have titties. Like they just they they do kind of swell, but they're I don't think they're like people. They're I don't know. Like, I guess I haven't really looked at at. Ape titties either. Uh, that's not my kink. <laughs> well, right, me, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I never had a reason to, but I'm gonna Google tonight. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. This is how Shane Dawson got canceled. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google <laughs> ape titties, guys. <laughs> I just curious. Well, come on, who's not curious about that? I don't know if they do or not. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good possibility. But but I don't know. Patty did. That's why her name's Patty. She was, mm. instead of Pat. It's Patty. <laughs> Because it's a female. But one other thing, you know, on the subject of, of, of some type of intelligence um, was that they believe that there that you can see a braid in its fur. And so, you know, whatever technology people use, I, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a techie person. Um, you can see that there's, she's got a braid. And so it's like, okay, maybe that's some type of symbol, some type of like, that signifies some type of uh, hierarchy in the clan or you know who knows so i mean obviously you know that is some type of intelligence now it could be a dread could just be dreaded hair matted hair um one really interesting i don't know if it's true and i really would have to look into it even further but one interesting theory that i've read is that it's actually a wound and that the bigfoot that we see in that footage is walking away from the guys after the rest of their the tribe has been slaughtered and supposedly there's like clues like there's clues like in the footage that suggest that it it was a there was a massacre that took place like there's like parts in the footage where you can like see like a pelt and blood and like there's like a, a shot of like the river and it's red and right like, but why would they I don't know not you know film that you why know, it at that point, it's like clearly they're view, like making this video for documentation. You yeah. Know, that there's this thing, even if they don't show anybody, you know, they wanted to take a recording of it to show that it was there. Right. So why would they not show like the other ones? Well, right, and, like, if they killed them, why wouldn't they, like, turn around and, like, sell the bodies to science? Because, right. you know... Or a museum. Right, that would be super That's money. Right. So, I don't know what the motivation would be. Again, I'd have to really look into it, um, but apparently there is. And, and there is, you know, whatever. There's a theory out there that there is some type of motivation for this to happen. So, I, I don't know the full story, um, but, you know, that. but that's just one possibility. I don't know. I think it's probably more likely that... They just caught this thing walking, and, you know, that's another thing. Bigfoot, the Bigfoot, um, the, the, the Patty footage came out, uh, that was, that happened in 1967. And, um, 1967 is also the same year that the Silver Bridge collapsed in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So what I you know and and you know just I'll just kind of put it in this gotta watch the documentaries guys because they're gonna be great. Um, if one of the things that I noticed during my research was like during the 1960s a lot of this crazy shit happened, and it's like it was kind of a it, th there's like a linear timeline to it all, and so <laughs> that's what I've been doing is piecing together these different. I just haven't figured it out. So that happened in uh, in uh, California. The pat the patty footage was taken in California, so it's like I don't know if that's related. I you know I gotta figure out how. It was just really it was an interesting connection that I made, and especially with the theory of it could be an interdimensional creature because my theory is that these are ultra dimensional creatures, which is basically the same thing. <laughs> it's, or I'm sorry, ultra terrestrial is what they are, which are interdimensional creatures. It's basically the same thing. I don't know. I, you know, I just, I just want to throw that out there. Tease the documentaries a little bit. Um, <laughs> let you guys know they're still coming. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, 2020 is supposed to be what they call a glitch year. I don't yeah. know why. Okay. 
but I I'm sure that. there's probably going to be a lot of weird shit going on. Like a spike in sightings of different things, yeah. even if it's not in this year. Well, that was like one thing people wanted to know if there was going to be a spike in sightings, um, mostly with like UFOs. Uh, the UFO community is really big right now, and I, I don't really know why, but they're really probably because they attention. released all that stuff. I think so. That makes sense. So but everybody that was kind of like into it, like whether it was like really into it or just yeah kind of into yeah. it they're like getting back people into have been, it yeah they've been very vocal about it lately um but they there was like a question of whether or not like ufo sightings would go up with uh like quarantine and stay-at-home orders and stuff like that i don't believe they they have um they've all seemed to stay um pretty much where they're at but i don't know you know 2020 is not over yet well, there was, um, <laughs> I think it was this year there was a like somebody had like the like ring doorbell thing that like records the videos yeah and there was like a light in the sky and then it just like and it was gone there probably is a lot more of that happening um with people well, in and that one lady with the with the with the security the camera chicken the, dance the chicken alien. dance guy <laughs> the chicken dance guy <laughs> well, yeah yeah he was cute um yeah that lady caught that yeah that alien outside of, on her driveway and um she's like i don't know what it is and it does like a chicken dance and then walks weirdly away <laughs> so but i think that was last year oh was um, it it might have it might have been this know. year i don't remember it's hard to remember what the fuck has happened in 2020 <laughs> like what the fuck um but it, i think it was last year um no, this year the big booms are all the rage. So that's <laughs> the big booby booms. Uh, they're pretty big. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think there really has been an increase. Now, Bigfoot sightings, there's never really been a decrease in, like, because it's all over the world right. and in different parts of the world all the time. It's, it's constantly happening. And there's always, like, oh, somebody catches this new picture or video of Bigfoot. So it's like, how can you guys refute that this thing does not exist? when there's so much evidence saying otherwise there was one and it's like the um i I think it's like the mayaka skunk ape or swamp ape or something you know something like that um but it happened in florida um and it it this lady um sends two photographs and a letter to the local news and reports that you know something had been outside in her um yard eating her apples from her apple tree like stealing her apples and so one night she went to go you know investigate what it was and she encountered this big well she called it um an an orangutan orangutan i can't ever say the word correctly (laughs) orangutan i think is that right I, I call it orangutan. 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 Yeah, because Tang, yeah. The 90s. yeah. <laughs> well, basically, she thought it was that, and it looks very much like that. It looks very happy. And uh, <laughs> and she caught pictures of that, and she was just like, uh, I don't, you know, did someone lose this? <laughs> like, is this somebody's pet? She didn't know. But it's not, because this fucking thing's like seven to eight feet tall. It's big. And now, granted, orangutans are huge you know they are big they're not that big um so i mean that was probably one of the most interesting pictures that i've ever seen a bigfoot um i think that's probably my favorite photos and then my favorite video is probably still the the patty footage um you know but but it's out there i mean gosh just look up bigfoot footage you know bigfoot videos you know you'll, you'll find so many look up pictures of bigfoot you'll find so many and, uh, you know, I think that that's really, it kind of speaks for itself. I mean, it doesn't, why wouldn't it be out there? Like, <laughs> because it is, exactly. I, I don't know, I think, go ahead. Uh, well, really, it could just be like, you know, as humans have evolved over the years, yeah. maybe it's just people who haven't evolved because they didn't see a need to, or, you know, never find like there was were. never, like, I, I shouldn't say they didn't see there was a need to because it's not like it's a matter of choice. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know, grow an extra pinky, you know? Yeah, but that's true. Maybe they were so, like, sustainable the way that they were that they never had a need to evolve. Or they just, I guess there was maybe, like, a genetic 
thing within them that prevented them from evolving further. I mean, according to the Erickson Project, they're a hybrid of, you know, because we, we know that we've evolved, like we know about the Neanderthals and, and shit like that. And so according to the Erickson Project, they aren't, they aren't a, they aren't a, an evolved or unevolved version of us. They're just a different version of us. Just like okay. you have, well, just like, you know, like a liger, right? A liger is a mix between a lion and a tiger, right? They're not unevolved or de-evolved versions. It's just a different. So, like, it's like if if a, if a Homo sapien slept and 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 was able to um, breed with a um, Neanderthal, then they would make a Sasquatch. You know, okay. and so that's basically you know what they say is that it's just a different version of us. They've just so happened to withstand the test of time for whatever reason, and so. That's kind of, you know, where most of the science is with it. A lot of people call it the missing link, you know, and, and so and they're saying that it is a D, you know, a D evolved version of us. It was like the next step in humanity, you know, right before we happen. So, um, I mean, I guess that's probably up to personal belief. Again, I have no reason not to believe, uh, Dr. Ketchum. I re- you know, she has done amazing work. She's very credible. I mean, she's, I think, she, I feel like she has since gone off the deep end. I do. <laughs> I, I, I do. She Now she writes, like, Bigfoot sex novels and stuff like that. I feel like that's a little strange. But I think it was this project that kind of made her that way. Like, I don't think when she started it, she was that way. I think that it was just all of the backlash and... You know, the pressure of knowing that these people exist and not being able to be taken seriously enough to protect them. Um, so I, I do think that nowadays she is a little, you know, like it's just a little bit wahoo. Like she's a little she crazy. Like balls, balls. <laughs> you know, but, um, but I do, I, I do think that her work is probably the closest that we're going to get to actual proof of Bigfoot unless we just suddenly get lucky and we're able to stumble upon it somewhere. Um, right, because who knows? Maybe she's got like, you know, all of them like in a space where they can live freely. Right, and right. it's her land, so people right. can't come on her, her land. Property. Right, and you know she's just you know keeping this small civilization right. safe. But when she did this project, um, you know they had come up with a little. They weren't going to present everything because again. They were going to make this into a documentary and and present it all then, like discovering Bigfoot. And um, so, but they did release like a couple of videos. Um, they released the one which you saw earlier, Matilda, um, and it's you know full face of a Sasquatch, and people say that that's fake, that's not real. And then there's like a video of one. It's you can't really see it. You can just kind of see the body. You can see the fur on it. It's breathing, and it's pretty magnificent because the breathing is very very slow compared to ours like very slow it's like four breaths a minute or something like that i mean something ridiculous like that it's crazy i don't Mm. think it's four but it's very very low compared to ours well i mean they're bigger so they're probably well it could be four yeah i don't know pull in more more and and then exhale more so that's going to take more time for each side and then they can hold it you know you don't necessarily (laughs) you shouldn't be right right you breathe in (laughs) Yeah. And then you kind of hold it and then you breathe out. And it's all kind of out. like a natural. Well, that's true. And like if you watch somebody that's asleep, you know, usually it's a slow, right. you know, inhale, slow exhale. It's, it's, it's different. So, but it was, yeah, I mean, so there's that footage and I think it's amazing. I think the footage of Matilda is amazing. Um, and one thing that had happened around the same time that the Erickson Project had really started picking up. Um, was in Georgia, there was these two guys. One was a cop. And I don't remember what the other one did, but um, they claimed that they shot and killed a Bigfoot in the middle of the woods and they had the body. And they released pictures of this thing. They had it in a giant um, freezer. And yeah, they had pictures of it. Um, It was, and you could see the face and everything. You could see like intestines or something hanging out of it from like where they had shot it or something. And it was just, it was wild. I mean, it had teeth. 
they had and they had a tongue sticking out they had they took like close-up pictures of the teeth and the mouth and the tongue and uh they're you know they're telling everybody we have a big foot body we have a big foot body um they were trying well they it took a long time for them to release the body to anybody and they said that they were trying to figure out who they wanted to release the body to what they wanted to do they were going to sell it and somebody put a bid on it for twenty thousand dollars and they, I think, I'm pretty sure it was 20000 And they took it. They're like, yes, we'll take $20,000. And so the person drives to go pick it up. And while they're there, and it's on thawing for them to take it, because I guess they could, he, could, he was allowed to take the Bigfoot body, but wasn't allowed to take the, uh, the freezer that it was in. I don't know. But as it was on thawing, um, things kind of unraveled. And they quickly found out that it was just a rubber suit and it was fake it was just a rubber suit it they put like animal entrails on the top of it the teeth were like fake teeth and then you know the tongue was like a cow tongue or something like it was it was really disappointing and that was an issue and so what the guys did at that point was instead of just being like okay we got one over on everybody they were like well but we do have a body still it just wasn't that one and it's like and they tried to, you know, then they tried to capitalize. The one guy became like a Bigfoot hunter or something. I mean, it was just really dumb. And it was just, it really, shit like that, I mean, it really fucking hurts the study. Like, it really does. And it makes people not want to take you seriously. And so, you know, it was it was just a really fucked up thing to do. And um, so, but that again, that was happening at the same time as the Erickson Project. So that could be why there was so much backlash. You know, because people were just over Bigfoot because now the whole fucking world, everybody, this was big news. Everybody knew about the Bigfoot body and we were like, oh, finally, this is it. And it was over. So I think that the world just wasn't ready for another disappointment. And in that, I think the study kind of got lost and it's just not a thing anymore. They really should look into doing another one with today's technology because I'm sure it's advanced in 10 years, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and see what they find with it. I mean, but you have to have, unfortunately, again, this was something that a, you know, uh, most studies, most scientific studies that are, that are going up for like peer review and stuff, they're all private. So they're privately funded. So you'd have to find somebody that would want to fund it. And I know it was called the Erickson Project because it was funded by Adrian Erickson. And so, I mean, you got to find a a fucking millionaire to want to drop. I think he dropped like $500,000 on this project. And so you have to find somebody that was able to do that and do it again. And I, I think it would be smart to look into doing it again. Um, I'd fund it if I could. <laughs> I donate. Let's say we should start a Kickstarter. <laughs> is that a thing anymore? <laughs> Go fund me, whatever it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, um, I think it'd be worth it to look into. So like I said, because of that, because of all, the, all of that, it just kind of, Everybody just overlooked it, and it just kind of got pushed to the wayside, and nobody really knows that we have a scientific fucking name for Bigfoot. Like, we've proven it existed already, and that's, and in my mind, you can't tell me any different. That's, I feel like, I feel like it's, it's real, and we've proven that it's real. So it's like, when I see stuff that's like, evidence of Bigfoot, it's like, we don't need evidence. We have all the evidence that we need. We have its fucking genome sequencing. Like, we, we, we know. We have the DNA sequencing for it. We, we know everything about it. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's my opinion on it. Why, would, why do you think they would want to hide a Bigfoot from us? You know, I was thinking about that, and I don't really know. Because it's like there's not really any reason Mm -hmm. why because other than like maybe I guess like to protect them so it's not like they're you know invaded and yeah and then we end up causing them to go extinct or it is it is in a lot of um I don't think maybe individual states I'm not sure in a lot of areas I know for sure there are like Bigfoot protection laws where like you can't shoot and kill one uh, and maybe the united states is it doesn't have any but in other areas you know whatever they call it there um there is a you know there, there are laws that say that you can't hunt bigfoot because it's endangered <laughs> so it's like well what do they know but some places will do that and maybe like i think the Loch Ness monster is technically protected by law like if you actually see the Loch Ness monster you can't shoot you it, can't and kill kill it. it you're not allowed right and so but it's like but are they doing that just to drive tourism? 
to those right, areas. Law, man, so it must exist. Right. I got to go see this for myself, you know, or or what? You know, what's the deal there? So, I mean, I don't know if they would have a, 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 any reason unless <laughs> unless it was ultra terrestrial. Because they have a lot of reason to hide ultra terrestrials from us or even extraterrestrial or interdimensional or whatever it is you want to call them. They, would, they have a lot of reason to hide those because we would panic. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of things that we as a people do not know about. Even if somebody like in the scientific community knows about it or somebody in the government knows about it. Yeah. And then I'm sure there's things that nobody on this earth even knows about. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that's a mix of everything. Well, and then like on top of that, one thought I just had was like, if if we did have the existence of Bigfoot, then that would kind of prove evolution in a way. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? (laughs) Guess what happens to Christianity? A lot of people go, oh, and they start questioning that. And uh, in America anyway, we're pretty good about controlling people with Christianity. And so, you know, that's why it was invented. <laughs> that's why religion is a thing anyway. But, I mean, not just Christianity. Mo- most religions, actually, would, would have a problem with that. It would directly, you know, conflict with what their beliefs are. Right. And, well, any and then religion you lose control. is out to control. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. Whether that's in a positive form or right. a negative form, and right. whether that puts that power in your hands right. or somebody else's, right. or both, mm-hmm. you know, it's, that's still what it is. It's all about control. It's right. all about you know, keeping yourself in check and doing things that right. align with something. Right. So, right. so if we broke that illusion of, of, you know, we came from a God, not from science, then that would be dangerous. Yeah. And so that, I mean, that, and I guess there are reasons, I guess there's, there's a motivation to why we wouldn't disclose Bigfoot if the government knew about it. Now, what if Bigfoot <clears throat> has the ability to, I don't know, say be invisible? Well, that's the, that's a possibility. That's what these people are saying with the um, interdimensional Bigfoot. Right. Yeah. That's basically that's, that's what pretty I was much what they're saying. Stemming yeah. from. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're saying. Like it, it could just go invisible. So it's like we we run on it. But then, like, why wouldn't we have footage? We have all this other footage of it. Why wouldn't we have footage of it like going invisible? You know what I mean? Like it's there one second, and then it's gone. Maybe. I mean, because it, it, when it knows it's being recorded. Because if it's intelligent enough to like know to stay away from us like that, it's intelligent enough to be interdimensional. Then why the fuck is it hanging out in the goddamn woods of Ohio? You know what's it, like? Right. What do you know? <laughs> you know why? <laughs> For what reason? Like, why is it throwing fucking what's rocks out at people? There, girl? What you hiding? Right. What you, what you got going on? Going around breaking trees down and shit. I mean, wh- why? <laughs> For what? <laughs> you know. So is this what you came here for? Uh, right. Is there really? something you're mining and then something at your home? Planet? Well, it could be. I guess that's a good point. It could be because of resources. I want to invest. <laughs> I'll come with you. Just take me away from this fucking place. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, but then, like, also, if it is an intelligent species and, and it knows enough to know that we have this pandemic going on, then maybe it would be staying really away from us because it doesn't want the corona. <laughs> it doesn't want the rona. Um, you know, I don't know. There's there's a lot of what-ifs with it. I just believe that it's just a different... I think it's a, it's a less intelligent version of us but it's a more intelligent version of anything that we've ever seen I think that um, I feel like we have proven that it's out there I think it's in small populations and I feel like it is all over the world um, because I also believe in the theory of Pangea so I do think that every all the land was connected at some point and then it broke apart and we moved and um, you know different things will prove that but then it's like, why is the Yeti, like the abominable snowman, like, why is it white? Like, what evolutionary, but I guess polar bears are white, and they live in the cold. I mean, it could just be albino. An albino version? Mm-hmm. That's true. Because, I mean, there's like albino Well, that's true, and, and that is, uh, being but an is albino. The, is albinism. the white associated to the region? Yeah, specifically so, to the region. Then, yeah, that, region. that might not be the case. Yeah. Or maybe that's just... Maybe, you know, within this community, mm-hmm. the albinos, you know, kind of stuck together. Maybe the albinos were shunned. That's true. I made their own. Because it is genetic. 
And so that is a possibility. But then like other areas, like there's different shades, you know, just like people have, there's different shades of colors. There's red, you know, they have that. And like, that was another thing when they did the uh, study and I don't, I don't remember the exact name, but they found out that it having the redheaded gene, it had it in the, in the same way that humans did, which made it again, very human. Well, you know, I, I keep saying human, very homo sapien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, some of these people out here, I wouldn't necessarily call them human. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing humane about them. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, you know, it does have the different shades and that could be, re and that's regional because of, you know, just like with us as a people, you know, we, we all come from black people, but we're white people, you know, we're, we're, our, our skin colors are obviously very different. And the only reason why it's different is because of your placement in the country that your that, that your genealogy has been, has lived in. Yeah, and that's it. It, it you has know. to do with like the exposure of the sun. Right, exactly. And so that would make sense that, you know, Bigfoot would have that. But again, you know, I think that that, come, that breaks down to, you know, Pangea. That's why there's humans on every continent, you know, because there was once humans all over on the one giant piece of land and it broke apart. So, um, you know, <laughs> that's <laughs> my own personal. Y'all will see when california breaks off you guys will see that <laughs> land breaks apart all the time <laughs> so you know i've always wondered like would it be like in a situation like that like w it could either be like a gradual situation where it's just like oh this river is getting wider and wider and wider or it could just be like a fucking earthquake that just crumbles the ground and it cracks and spreads I don't know. That would be weird to like. If so there is a happened. There's a science behind it. I don't know enough about it to feel comfortable enough to explain it, but I do believe that there is a science behind it that says that, like, basically what you're saying, like there'd be like an earthquake and the ground would crumble. Like we have sinkholes and stuff, right. and so it would be like along that line, and it has something to do with fault lines. I again, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure about all. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that is I think that both are true yeah. I think that over time water erodes certain areas that's why it can because even though we can't see it one thing that we do know definitively is that water is continuously flowing on, under our feet at all times wherever you're at here in Ohio it is right below us right now and so it's like I think the water can like erode up kind of further and so like you say you have a three inch thick you know we'll just say three inches piece of of land right and there's water running underneath that land well over time it's going to become two inches and then it's going to become one inch and then eventually it's going to become nothing and so why why wouldn't it be able to break off in the middle of somewhere if that's the case so I, but i don't know again i don't <laughs> i don't i'm not gonna lay claim to any of that statement so <laughs> because <laughs> I, I don't know enough about it but that's my personal, you know, I, I'm very much a Pangea follower. So Maybe that's one day we can just talk own. about like weird earth theories. What do you mean? Like, you know, Pangea or like how the yeah. world has become the way it has. Because I'm sure yeah. there's some weird shit in, in there somewhere. That's true. That's true. That's true. We could talk about that. Stuff that we can't exactly prove, but we can. We have a, an idea, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but, but because we can't see it, we might we could probably talk about you know um, the ecosystem of the world and how like I said like what's in, like what is at the the Earth's core like I don't I don't think we know for sure. I'm pretty yeah, sure we, we don't could know. just do a whole episode on planet Earth. <laughs> it would it, you know what it would give us a, a reason to look into it you know yeah, so I mean I'm, I'm down for that right exactly it's you know there's there's weird Wednesdays there's weird science we can do this <laughs> <laughs> we can figure it out that, that wouldn't be a bad idea what do you guys think do you guys want us to do a, a planet earth episode one of these days <laughs> uh, you know because we will so <laughs> I mean you're the audience <laughs> but yeah those are uh, those are my basic thoughts uh, about Bigfoot um, do you have anything that you want to add to the to the Bigfoot? No, I mean, I'm not, like, super familiar with Bigfoot, so yeah. I can't... I mean, I know some things, right. but... There's a lot. There's a lot yeah. of information, and so it's like... You know, again, like, we didn't even talk about, like, those reports of, like, how Bigfoot have, like, 
come to like villages and like raped women or like there's Bigfoot attacks that are reported everywhere. I mean, you know, it's just there's a lot. There's a lot to it. And uh, so, you know, I don't know. Well, well just like the people that um, like the, that have like the Wolfman syndrome, they grow their hair all over their bodies. You know, is that because somewhere in their genes, they also have mixed genes with some type of Sasquatch creature, you know, down Could the line? Be. Um, you know, I mean, there's just, there's so much to cover on it that we would have to probably consolidate, well, just like with aliens and, and stuff like that. Um, we, we have to like consolidate it in like smaller chunks, you know, um, but this was just the, uh, the starter. Yeah. <laughs> there will probably be a Bigfoot part two. We haven't done part two of anything yet. When, when do we start doing part twos? At what point do we hit in the podcast where we decide this week is going to be... Aliens I mean, part we two. could really do part yeah. two at any point. I mean, yeah. if something comes up in I guess the meantime, that's true. like, oh, this alien was seen in yeah. Ohio, we could do, okay, aliens oh, part two. Aliens part two. <laughs> Talk about the Ohio aliens. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true, I guess. Just how, I mean, that's just how it, how it rolls. We just bullshit it, and we're like, how about we do this this week? <laughs> or somebody might suggest something, and we're like, oh, yeah, okay, we'll do that. You know, so I guess you're right. Um, I guess you're right. That's a, we probably will. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else to add this week, um, then I guess we'll go ahead and cut you guys off right here. We will, uh, you got something? No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.